Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, you know the job description of a member of Congress is real short. It's to take care of your constituents and to have oversight of the federal government. This amendment deals with the oversight portion. It's oversight of an author unauthorized federal agency, you know, of which we have over 1,200 unauthorized agencies. And an unauthorized agency is one that was simply not approved by Congress. In this case, the agency was approved through the executive branch to help with overseeing the implementation of NEPA back during the Nixon administration. Since then, it has become one of the rogue, woke, climate control warriors for the Biden administration, pushing rules and regulations. As a matter of fact, the budget for this unauthorized agency was around $3.75 million. Happened to grow during the Democrats' Inflation Reduction Act to over $62 million. Now, the Council on Environmental Quality is just one of a long list of unauthorized agencies in this federal government. During recent oversight hearings as well, on four occasions, Director Brenda Mallory was requested to come and testify. Y'all, she only showed up one time. One time. And during that time, she decided that she would refuse to answer questions. She didn't have to answer our questions on any subject. Let me make that even clearer. She wasn't refusing to answer my questions or the committee's questions. She was refusing to answer to the American people, the very taxpayers that, that foot the bill for that agency. You see, they've gotten to where, like other agencies, like the ones that was just mentioned, they feel they don't have to answer to us. They don't have to answer to the, the American people. They're beyond that. It's beneath them to have to explain what they do. This amendment does one simple thing. $3.75 million is their annual budget. It simply takes that from this woke climate change warrior style agency and it moves it over to the national parks to their construction fund. And what that does is that's going to help, Mr. Chairman, that's going to help with the backlog of deferred maintenance that's in that national parks. National Parks is running a deferred maintenance because of members from the other aisle using their, their funds on the National Parks for pet projects. Hello, friends. It is being sent out. New rebate checks have been made available for millions of American families throughout the months of November and December. More inflation relief payments will be automatically deposited and mailed to eligible households. But there are requirements that you will need to meet in order to be eligible for this money. My dear friends, I'll be sharing with you what you need to know. So please make sure that you watch until the end of this video. Also, to say thank you for being part of this community. Every Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, dearish friends, the greater your chances of winning these weekly giveaways. In a video later today, I will be announcing the winners, so please make sure, friends, that you do stay tuned. Arizona Governor Katie Hobbs says a new tax rebate is now available to hundreds of thousands of Arizona families. The announcement comes over five months after the Arizona Families Tax Rebate was signed into law. It is part of the fiscal year 2024 state budget. Governor Hobbs calls a rebate the first of its kind, stating it will give money back to almost 750,000 families. The Arizona governor says eligible families will have an opportunity to receive up to $750 in tax rebates with funds made possible by the latest bipartisan budget. State Senate and House Republicans have also previously spoken about the new tax rebates, which are aimed to help families 
combat rising inflation. The rebates will be issued to taxpayers using their last provided direct deposit information. If the state does not have direct deposit information, a paper check will be mailed to your last known address. Deposits are expected to take place sometime during the month of November. Alabama taxpayers will receive a one time tax rebate beginning in December. The Alabama Department of Revenue will issue rebates of $150 for single filers and $300 for married filers beginning December 1st. To qualify for these rebates, taxpayers must have filed a 2021 individual income tax return, non residents, estates, Or trust, or anyone claimed as a dependent during the 2021 tax year will not qualify. Qualified taxpayers can expect to receive their rebate based on how they received their 2021 tax refund by direct deposit or by paper check. For qualified taxpayers who did not receive a 2021 tax refund, the rebate can be expected by paper check. The rebates will not be taxable. For Alabama income tax purposes, other recent tax changes in Alabama include a one cent reduction in the state sales tax on groceries and a one cent increase in the state gas tax. Also, an overtime pay state income tax exemption for hourly workers will begin on January 1st, 2024. Job growth in America slowed in October. And the unemployment rate ticked higher. This is as auto strikes weighed on the labor market last month. New data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics showed that non farm payroll growth totaled 150,000 in October, while the unemployment rate rose to 3.9% from 3.8%. The unemployment rate now stands at its highest level since January 2022. Economists surveyed by Bloomberg expected job gains to tally 180,000, with unemployment holding steady from the prior month. In its report, the Bureau of Labor Statistics noted that employment in manufacturing fell by 35,000 in October, largely due to strike activity, with labor actions from the United Auto Workers. At plants for three major auto manufacturers. Earlier this week, the UAW reached a tentative deal with the automakers to end the strikes. Wages, which is a closely watched indicator for inflation and gauging how much leverage workers have had in the labor market, rose less than expected last month. Wages increased 0.2% on a monthly basis. And 4.1% over last year. The labor force participation rate decreased from 62.8% the month prior. Average weekly hours also ticked down slightly in September. The largest jobs increase in Friday's report were seen in healthcare, where 58,000 jobs were added. Employment in government rose by 51,000. Reaching its pre crisis level. The jobs report comes at a crucial time for markets, as stocks have rallied since the Federal Reserve's latest policy decision. Investors are largely betting that Fed Chair Jerome Powell's rhetoric on Wednesday means that the Fed will not raise rates in December and may be done raising rates altogether for this cycle. Powell acknowledged in a press conference. That some slowing in the labor market will likely be required for inflation to continue its downward trajectory. Powell also told reporters it is still likely to be true, not a certainty, but likely that we will need to see some slower growth and some softening in labor market conditions to fully restore price stability. So, dear friends, what are your thoughts on the U.S. economy? Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. Well, my beautiful and my greatest friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video. Dear friends, in a video later today, 
I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, dearish friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Thank you, friends, and have a wonderful and very blessed Friday.